Hello, folks. Here we come, Cup. I think I'm going to x nay that. It just sounds so much better with hello, folks. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But I'll, I won't do it anymore. I was giving that was your last. Here we come, Cup. No, I was giving you your <laughs> moment in the sun, though. Thanks. In the sun? Yeah. Spotlight. spotlight. <laughs> Or the sun. <laughs> the sun, the sunny spotlight. Yes. Hey, speaking of spotlight, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, we have a new light on us for today. Our lighting mm-hmm. expert came in this week. Shout out to Spruce. Yeah. We had our lighting expert come in and prepare us for our studio and some things that we're having to do inside of our studio here. Yep. In the I next think it feels bit. cozy. Yeah. So, um, crazy day today to i mean like i don't even know how to because we're talking at a different time obviously yeah. than you guys are listening yeah, yeah so y'all know we do these on sunday before they air on monday because they come out at like five o'clock in the morning on mondays mm-hmm. and so we obviously record them on sundays and in while we're recording this in just two hours mm-hmm. we are going to be drawing for our grand prize winner on our live event. Yeah, and like we've been we've been really hyping up this live event for a couple of weeks mm-hmm. when we finally decided what we were going to do. And if you if you're listening to this and you were on then you know where we're going. I hope it I hope everything <laughs> went well. <laughs> and we have no idea where we're going, but you do cuz you were on there. But in all seriousness, um w- these these little cafe zinos, mm-hmm. uh I hope that it ended up being very successful yeah. because it's something that we want to try to do. Um yeah. you know, maybe a couple of times a year just to invite the whole redeemed marriage community That's together. Right. Uh, so anyway, if you were on, thanks for being on. If you weren't and you, you missed it, then hopefully there's going to be another opportunity for you to be a part of a live event in the near future. Yeah. And if you heard Cafe Zinho and have no idea what we're talking about, that is the Portuguese word for little cup of coffee. And it's an invitation to come and sit with me and share coffee with me and share life and experiences. So that's why we named it that. We have a dear Brazilian friend who shared that with us. And so. Yep. And and the idea is that we want to be able to just continue offering marriage encouragement to people in all sorts of different ways. Yeah. We have a lot of resources, you know, Obviously, we really promote our podcast and our marriage coaching and then retreats, but we want to be able to support everybody out there. Yeah. And so that's why we're trying to learn how to be more involved on Instagram. Mm -hmm. If you're not following us on Instagram, go check that out because Heather is uh, becoming becoming an expert. I just put a great soccer Mm -hmm. one up just a few hours ago or an hour ago, and I've already had two people comment. I mean... They just commented, like, messaged me and mm-hmm. said, did you do this one or did Rusty? Mm-hmm. Because it was soccer related. I was like, it was all me. Well, we're trying. <laughs> we're trying. We're trying to figure out how to reach the most people. That's right. And uh, so we're working on that and we're learning as we go, but it's fun. Uh, so today, yeah, it's been a crazy day. And we, the thing that makes it even crazier is the life stage that is quickly approaching. And so we didn't want to necessarily bog down too much in, you know, our life stage because some of you, you're already in this life stage. Some of you may be quickly approaching it. Some of you are so far away from it. Did you wish you were in this stage? Maybe you do wish you were in this stage. (laughs) But, you know, we, we we always want to try to be able to make what we're talking about be able to apply to every every marriage. Yeah. And so if you don't already know this, and you probably do because we talk about it a lot, uh, but our second and last child, because we only have two, uh, is heading off to college this week. So mm-hmm. this is the week of the second honeymoon that we like to call it. Now, Heather, why don't you explain and tell them why we choose to say everybody calls it empty nesting. Yeah. yeah. And we get it. But mm-hmm. second well, honeymoon. Well, I just think that empty nest has such a ne- it could have a negative and sad. Um, feel to yeah. it. Yeah, that we're that our home that we've pushed 
quite literally, our birds out right. of the nest and that we now are empty and it's and that we're alone and all of that. And I just feel like that sounds sad and um, depressing. Yes. So we came up with the second honeymoon stage because we're going back mm -hmm. to how it was mm -hmm. when our honeymoon when we started on our honeymoon, it's just us. Like, like how many ever hours it was after our wedding that we left the rehearsal. I mean, <laughs> the wet, the reception, reception. The, reception. <laughs> the wedding. Yeah. No, the reception and started our journey together. Like that's kind of how we are. Now I will say that it is not as clean cut as that because when we had our, first honeymoon, we didn't have children even in our mind. Right. And so we we realize that we're oh, not yeah. cutting off our children and right. we're never going to think about we'll them always, again. <laughs> we'll always be parents. Right. But it's a way of life to where when I come home from work or if we're plan, planning dinner or when you are whatever, when you come home from work, I'm just saying whatever, event, when we pick up the remote control, mm -hmm. it's just us. Yeah. Like. Like, those are the only things we have to worry about in planning dinner and what we're doing after work and what, you know, what we're watching on TV and when we go to bed and when we wake up. All of those mm -hmm. little decisions for the foreseeable future mm -hmm. are just us. It's so weird. It's weird. It is weird. So, I I won't, I know, so people are listening and there's some people that are going, Oh that my gosh, like that dream. sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's some people that are like, oh my gosh, what are yeah. we going to do when our kids yeah. leave? And so, so really, I mean, that's where we are in, in life. And the thing that, the thing that I want people to understand is we, our family, the four of us, we have two boys, we have a 22 year old and we have an 18 year old and we are really, really close and and it's not like I'm closer to one or the other mm -hmm. or both or more or, you know, closer than Heather is or she's closer than. I mean, we're just all really close. And the other thing that I want people to understand, and you guys know because you've listened to our you probably listened to the podcast of our boys. We've had so many responses on that. And like if they you are. haven't. Yeah, stop. go back. I mean, don't stop. At the end of this one, go back, go back and go listen back. to yeah. it. Because <laughs> they, they are incredible young men. And so we've never had, we haven't really dealt with that whole, oh my gosh, I'm just ready for them mm -hmm. to get out of here. Sure. Like, and, and I mean, it was the way God orchestrated it to where, you know, we had four or five years with Luke before Logan was born. And then Luke left and went off way off to college. Mm -hmm. And so for four years, we've had just Logan. Mm -hmm. And and it's been great just being able to connect with Logan in a way that we never really had because That's we right. never had any alone yeah. time with well, him. Well, he got all of the attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's just been, I mean, God just worked all that out beautifully. But I say all that because we're not in this season or stage of life to where we're like, Oh, we got to get rid of these kids. I mean, they are, you know, causing so much trouble or we got to just get rid of them. You know, it'd be best for them to be on their own. Nothing, it's nothing like that. Like, we are all so close. And so we're going to miss having our family together, even in bits and pieces, um, tremendously. Sure. So, but here's what I, here's what I want to throw out there first, and we can discuss it for a second. What do you think that we've done right now now look we could wad all this up and throw it out come thursday <laughs> because we really don't know That's how, right. how it's going to go down we but, might need to revisit this next week <laughs> yeah well, we might have to be hey did y'all hear everything last week forget it scratch that scratch it. no i i think that there's people out there that are not at this stage yet and we're not pros because mm -hmm. we've only launched one. Mm -hmm. and we're about to launch the second one. There's people that are listening to this that you've already launched your kids. You're, you're probably pros at this. We're in the midst of it. So I think being able to share that with people, I think you everybody can relate to it. Because there's some of you that are like, we're not there yet, but I would love to know how we can be prepared. Mm -hmm. And so I want us to just talk for a second on 
the the things that maybe we have done marriage wise mm -hmm. to prepare ourselves for what's coming up this week you have any thoughts yeah um i feel like um this is just the prime example of you springing th things on me oh yeah <laughs> and hey, never get, preparing me get used to it so it's just us i'm know, springing everything right. on so you i from think now. that for me the biggest thing that i can look and go dang i'm glad we did that well was that we still are connected mm -hmm. now i will say you know post uh infidelity has been 13 years and we had 15 years before infidelity so i don't think those first 15 years we did a very good job of this but through infidelity and us having to fall in love with each other again and you falling in love with a new me um and me following um follow falling Fall. in love with a version of you post-trauma i mean mm -hmm. that it's a different person it's not like you needed to become somebody new but you're somebody new mm -hmm. because of that so in these 13 years we have been very intentional in connecting together and staying connected in ways that we find enjoyable about each other mm -hmm. so that when Luke left. Of course, we still had Logan here that we were pouring into, but we also did have a lot more time, especially once he started driving. Yeah. It was, you know, a lot more time, just me and you. And it wasn't like, well, crap, what are we going to do now? Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, I still enjoy being mm -hmm. with you. Um, so I think, I think that we did th that well. Now, when he leaves, we may go, ooh, we could have done a better job in this area mm -hmm. or this area or that area. But I think that we are prepared um, as far as us being together and enjoying each other's company. I think we're going to be fine mm -hmm. in that area. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that there's, we, we are, we really enjoy being with each other. Uh, we truly do. Uh, the other thing is, I think that just the way that God has orchestrated the marriage ministry and things, we have this purpose together now, too. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if you look at our calendar from now, I mean, we were talking yeah. about it today, but from now through November, which, I mean, it's going to almost mm -hmm. be time for people to come home for Christmas, but from now through November, I mean, we're, we've got a, we're full yeah. A lot of stuff going on that we're going to be doing, marriage coaching, and we're going to a retreat, and obviously we both have jobs outside of mm -hmm. this, and we're traveling a couple of times. We're going on this double date that we've mm -hmm. been planning or you know promoting for all this time. So that's one of the things that I think that we were, uh, you know, maybe it was a little bit subconsciously or in the background, or God was just doing it for us or mm -hmm. helping us. But we now have this purpose in marriage mm -hmm. that's like once once we are in the second honeymoon phase, we're not going, well, what are we going to do now? Mm -hmm. I mean, we were, we're really, really busy, but busy in a way that it's under our control. Our right. schedule is mm -hmm. under our control. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I think that we've done really well over even just the last few weeks is we've sort of communicated about it. And and I will say that that Heather needs to take credit for this because she's come to me and she said, hey, let's talk about this. And one of them is just her being able to admit and express that we we handle grieving very differently. And, you know, she came to me and said, look, you know, there's going to be emotions and a grieving process. And as I'm doing that, I don't want you to think that I'm not excited about being with you. And that meant so much to me. Like, not just because it helped me to go, okay, I need to be really sensitive to the way that you're grieving, but just the, hey, I'm really excited about this next stage, and, and the sadness and emotions don't discount that. Right. And I think that that was really important. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to feel free I mean, I just remember when we dropped off Luke, of course, it, he was 10 hours away and it was during COVID, but I cried for most of the way home. Yeah. Like it was hard. Yeah. I mean, he was the first, he was so far away, the fear of the unknown with mm -hmm. COVID. It was, I mean, I cried and I just 
could imagine myself leaving Sanford three and a half hours away, leaving Logan and being emotional and you thinking, well, dang, she doesn't even want to go home with just me. And that's not it. Right. And so I just wanted to make sure that you knew that, yes, it's sad. I mean, this is 22 years that we have poured into these two boys. For sure. And it's not that that's over. We'll continue to pour into Mm -hmm. them, but, but it's going to look completely different Mm -hmm. and I think I was talking to my best friend this week and it was like because she has a child going off to college too except it's her oldest Mm -hmm. and we were talking about how we're just gonna miss the little moments of experiencing things that they that we experience because they're in our home so like how was your day of course we can send a text and say how was your day but when they come in from school and they're talking about that day their day it's completely different than just sending a text and saying how was your day or Mm -hmm. calling and saying how was your day or um you know getting ready watching them get ready for a date or Mm -hmm. you know hearing about that day like it's just things that are the the regular things of life that are just going to be different. So the reason why I say that is because the regular routine, the regular rhythm of our day is going to look different than it's looked ever. Mm -hmm. Because even though, yes, we're going back to that second honeymoon stage, we still have children in our minds that we're thinking about. Yeah, and and they're still our responsibility. Sure. You know, I mean, it's not like all of a sudden... We just go, oh, hey, they don't cost us any money anymore, so we can do whatever we want to with our money, or we can go on whatever trip we want to, you know. They didn't disappear. (laughs) Right, right. So it's this weird, it's just a weird transition. It is. But but I do think that there's, because of our preparation and because we have communicated well, we've— really stayed connected. We love each other. We love the purpose that God has for us right now, collectively. Mm -hmm. We're just, I mean, we're as prepared as you can be, while at the same time knowing that we're going to be, be really sad. Okay, let's shift for just a second. You were kind of starting to to go in this direction, but what do you see as the challenges? I think that one challenge is going to be that because we have spent so much time with our four family and their friends, parents, because of who they're with, um, I think one challenge is going to be friendships. Mm. Um, You have said over and over that I'm your best friend and that's how it's supposed to be and you're right. Like, you're my person. Um, And I'm your person, and that's how it's supposed to be. But I also think that we are going to have to make sure that we have friendships outside of us because we can't just be with us all of the time. Mm -hmm. And we've had outlets with our boys and going and doing things with them. But, you know, I, I do. I mean, I have... I think that God's put some sweet friends in my life um, that I get to journey with and kind of do life with. And I may get to pour into them a little bit more than I have been able to because of the time frame. You know, and some of them have younger children that, you know, I could help love on them and support them. And, you know, I have a niece that's still in high school and, you know, my best friend has four kids. And so there's, there's an, there's, ways that I think that I'm going to be able to pour into friendships a little bit more. And I think that that's going to be a challenge because Mm -hmm. I feel like it's going to be easy to kind of sit back and go, oh, Mm -hmm. you know, our, our, our duty is done and kind of really dig in to this marriage ministry, which I'm super, super thrilled about and excited for. And so, but I think that that's going to be a little bit of a challenge is to be purposeful. Mm -hmm. Um, my, Penny, my mentor, has always said that you don't close the book on one chapter and then never open another book. It's like, let's, okay, what's next? What's Mm -hmm. next for us? And if I'm sitting on the sofa playing on my phone, playing games all day or watching TV all day, that's not God honoring. Mm -hmm. Like, how am I going to invest 
in someone else. Now, of course, we are pouring and investing in what we're doing right here. Mm -hmm. But I also think that God put, is going to put people in our paths. And I'm just praying that my eyes will be open to that, that I will be ready to step into a need yeah. um, if there is one, and that we can enjoy doing life with people that God has put in our path at church or whatever mm -hmm. over over the last few months that it's like, hey, I know this book is closing or this mm -hmm. chapter's, you're turning the page, but here's a new one. Yeah. No, I like that. And I've thought about that too. I, I have actually thought about just on, yes, as it being a challenge, but also the freedom of now us really be able being able to turn more of our investment to other people mm -hmm. and and not that we're not investing in our kids like sure. you said but we just don't have those time constraints right and so you know i was even thinking today when we were looking at all of the people that have that had submitted a question and there were so many people from you know that were local mm -hmm. and mississippi people and i was like i mean we could go out with those people right. like if you're <laughs> yeah. listening and we don't draw we didn't draw your name <laughs> Just call us and invite us out on a We're date. There. We'll go. Do we'll go on a double date with you because you're local. That's right. um, but no, seriously, I mean, those are people that. And if you're not local, pay to get us to you, you and go. we'll buy the meal. <laughs> <laughs> it's the travel that's so hard. But I, I'm, you know, that's you know that's fun. I mean, it'll be fun for us. It is a challenge, but I also, you guys, some of you know us better than others, but. I mean, I don't think there's really any danger or any threat of us sitting on the couch and playing with our phones all the time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, probably the opposite. Just like I said, I mean, our next three or four months are already mm -hmm. jammed with yeah. stuff, which is awesome. Um, you know, I think, and I've told you this, that because our schedules are really different, mine and yours, my challenge is going to be, uh, going back to that empty word, the house is going to be a lot more empty mm -hmm. with me in it because, you know, in, er, you know, most people know my summers are extremely busy. Really, from April through July, or like, and there's I'm no never, working at home during that. Yeah, time. and I'm never at home. But the rest of the year, I have a flexible schedule where I do go to the office, but it's you know I can go whenever I want to, and so much of that was based on. Logan's schedule because mm -hmm. I wanted to be here with him if he before he went to school mm -hmm. in the morning and I would help with breakfast and then get him off to school and then I would head to the office and then you know I'd go watching at soccer practice sometimes or I would make sure I was home when he came home and it's like yeah he ain't here yeah I mean <laughs> and right. you know you're you kind of have your set time sure. you leave you come mm -hmm. back home and that's good I but, mean that's true not yeah. that's good <laughs> that's yeah, true so that's gonna about it. yeah that's gonna be a challenge for me um you know look I I mean like real talk like we discussed oh, a challenge gosh, yesterday say the sex question <laughs> Oh, no, but I mean, you know, people, I don't know that people think about stuff well, like let that. Let me just say, first of all, before we talk about the sex question, when something comes into my head that I'm like, how are we going to deal with this? Used to, I would just bury it and be like, we'll just cross that bridge when we get there. But I am so, I call it a heart talk, but it ended up not being a heart talk, which was fine because we had some discussion yeah, and about I it. I asked. I was yeah. like, can we just talk about this yeah, for a little yeah, bit? Yeah, but yeah, But I mean, yeah, it's, it, it, uh, can I just tell the question or is that yeah. too much info? No, no, no. Okay, I mean, so just you guys who know a, you have teenagers, it's hard to find times to be intimate. Yeah. When you have teen teenagers, because they're not like, oh, you put the little toddlers to bed and they stay there until eight. Which you know. those people are probably going, oh, yeah, like that ever happens. <laughs> well, I that's mean, true. there's no time to find it then either. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, for 22 years, yeah. Yeah. it's been a challenge. Yes. Of like, oh, and now that, you know, he's driving, it's like, oh, wait, is he coming home? Where is he? What, what if he walks in? What if he's in, you know, I mean, it's just yeah. this. Con not constant, but you just always have to be thinking oh, about constant, it. Oh, constant, because it's and always on your mind. It's <laughs> there just constant. Are times <laughs> that I've said, hey, he's not here. Let's have a quickie or whatever, you know. And so, but what, what my question to you was, now I feel like once he's gone, like we could do that anytime that we wanted to. Now, someone like you, you're like, 
yippee skippy hip hip hooray and i feel like that's going to put a lot of pressure mm-hmm. on me because i'm going to be like wait nobody's here to say oh we can't do this right now because somebody's home mm-hmm. and so there aren't just like already made moments right where it makes sense right. to have sex well we just talked about how there's been just this rhythm of you know when you kind of make time for that right and there's right. been for 22 years yeah. there's been this rhythm of you find That's time true. and we preach that to That's people right. we're like That's you right. find time yeah so then what do you do when, when it's, you don't have to find no, time anymore. Because when you go mm-hmm. back to that first honeymoon stage, I mean, just all, all the, the time. time. Right. But then now, and I mean, yes, there will be some more freedom in that. And it will probably happen more often than it did because we aren't in those time mm-hmm. constraints. But also, I want to be able to sit down on the sofa with you and enjoy a movie without thinking, well, nobody's here, so he's automatically going to think <laughs> right, we're going to have right. sex. Yep. So it's just things like that that I, here's the, here's the, here's what I want you to hear. Those things are okay. It's okay to have those feelings, even if you're not fixing to be a second honeymooner. I mean, like, it's okay to have the feelings that we're having on different topics. Talk about them. Yeah. Like, for just sure. say, hey, can we talk talk about this? It started as a hot heart talk because I just wanted you to know my heart and my fear. But then you were like, hey, is it okay if we talk about yeah, it? And be- it? Because I was like, oh, I've had those thoughts, too. And I too. didn't think you had. Right. I thought I'm the only one that thinks about it. And he's... And he's going to think, great, she's never going to want to have sex because she's having this conversation. Mm -hmm. But you didn't take it that way. And you were very open to my thoughts. And you were like, yeah, I mean, I get it. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite things that you say is, I understand that you feel that way. You're not saying, I understand why you feel that way. Mm -hmm. You're not saying, I understand the reasoning behind you feeling that way. It is, I understand that those are your feelings. And that is just so validating that even if my feelings don't make sense to you, even if my fear does not make sense to you, that you are saying, I understand that that is how you are feeling. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk through it. Let's work through it. Let's come up with solutions, you know. And so I just loved that you did that. But I think that there are going to be challenges like that that we don't even know are coming our way. That we're going to go, oh, hey. You know, I mean, I think about the dumb things like cooking. How mm-hmm. you cook for two people? Yeah. I've been cooking for two teenage boys for 22 years. No, I thought. I mean, yeah. obviously they hadn't been teenagers for 22 years. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, I've thought of it, too, because it's like, I, how many times is it just going to be so much easier for us to just go, oh, let's pick some up. I know. We and then it'll be people. awful because yeah. we'll be 800 pounds. Yeah. So there's there's just stuff that we're going to have to learn. But I also, when when I think about those things, they, they don't scare me. They're more exciting. Like, mm-hmm. oh, we're going to figure this out together. Right. Yeah. And I yeah. don't know. We were not there 13 years ago. No. If we had hit the empty nest stage yep. 13 years ago, we would have been in trouble. Mm-hmm. And we probably would have ended, because our hearts weren't in the right place. We mm-hmm. would have ended, and I don't want to say we would have ended in divorce, but we would have had a lot to work through. And a lot, like, I'm just thankful that we're not 27 years into marriage, and I'm not scared about the rest of our yeah marriage. Yeah or the rest of our life together. Like, I'm excited for it. Mm -hmm. And is there going to be moments of grief? Absolutely. Is there going to be times when I look back at sweet pictures of my boys and think, how is that gone? Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be times like that. But I also know that there's even better times coming. And I tell people all the time, the stages get better and better, and they do. And they do. They're sweet. I mean, you know. And both of our boys, you know, have girlfriends now, and we love being a part of those relationships. Mm -hmm. And And encouraging them and hanging out with them, mm -hmm. and it's just fun. Yeah. And then there will be another stage that comes along when they get married. And then there'll be another stage that comes along when they have kids. And, you know, it's just, it's just part of life. Just rest in this stage for a while. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, it'd be good. That'd be fine. We'll just stay. This is fine. This is going to be yeah, fine. Yeah. Let's just, let's and, you know, we were talking to my parents today at lunch, and we were talking about how me and my sister both stayed in Mississippi, went to school here, our families are here, and how they've just had us all this time. I'm not sure that's going to be the case for us. It's not. And, like, I, but I think it's so crazy how God prepares us for that because— I was the same way. I've stayed, you mm-hmm. know, my parents are in town mm-hmm. and we've kind of, you know, we've just stayed here. But I don't think that we necessarily ever really wished that for our kids right. because right. that's what we did. Not that, mm-hmm. I mean, it's been great and it's turned out great, but right. we've also had this, there was never, it was probably an opposite of trying to keep them here. Sure. Um, it was more of, hey, you know, you can stay, but you're also more than welcome to because we want them i mean it's like the whole uh you know pulling the arrow out of the quiver and mm-hmm. i mean you launch it yeah like you have to launch it and like i feel like we've done that with both of our boys and we should be really really proud of that yeah and that's what makes this next stage okay yeah. and exciting and fun yep it does all We're right. going to be fine. Of course we are. We're going to be fine. We still and want we you just, to call us for a double date. Yes. And- <laughs> yeah, call us for a double date. Just get us there. We'll pay for your food. <laughs> and, and we've got to make sure that I don't eat Fruit Loops every night for supper. Yeah. I love to eat Fruit Loops <laughs> for supper, but it's not good for me. <laughs> I need to cook, learn to cook for two. Hey, maybe we could look into some of those um, dinners, you know, where they deliver them to you, mm-hmm. not DoorDash, but like yeah, I know what you're saying. the meals, right, right? Where you and it says for two, and you just cook, chef it up yeah. for two people. We'll see. We got a lot. We got yeah, a lot, we got we a lot can, to figure out. It's gonna be fine. We're gonna My figure. friend says it's fine. It's fine. It's not ideal, but it's fine. <laughs> I so don't we're know. gonna figure it out. We're gonna get several weeks into this and go. It Maybe might be it ideal. ideal. <laughs> Maybe it is ideal. <laughs> Look, we've already, I mean, we already know the exact times that we're going to get to see Logan yeah. again mm-hmm. over the next few weeks. And even God put that together yeah. and sent us off on a journey in a few weeks to a retreat. And so we're just, yeah, yeah I mean, it's it's, fine. it's great. So I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed just uh, getting into our life a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of stuff happening. We still have, we have some space for marriage coaching yeah some marriage coaching has Fill been us great up. we need it <laughs> yeah i mean that's the <laughs> but that's the, the beauty of this yeah. the reason why we probably still have some because we've gotten some we've started with some new couples uh plus some some couples that we've been working with doing some follow-up and stuff but we have more more open nights mm-hmm. because we don't have to worry about yep. anybody else's schedule right now. That's so right. after Thursday. Yep. So uh so check out you know, reach out to us, get our calendar. We can uh we can And work if with you're you. listening to this on when it comes out, pray for us on Thursday. Yeah. Lift us up. That'd be awesome. Yep. It's gonna be um emotional for sure and exciting and yep. We'd appreciate the extra prayers. Yep. All right. Well, hey, you guys have a great week, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Redeemed Marriage Podcast. Hey, by the way, this is Rusty and Heather Bryant. We never said that. (laughs) Oh, whoops. (laughs) And peace. Peace.